Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We Nigerians are not used to such a warm reception from members of the British audience in recent years, so I'm most grateful to you. Uh, but I understand that uh, the reason is that you want something from me as a Nigerian. Uh, you want to know the secrets of Nigeria's success with political union. That's right, that's what I was told. I've been asked to come here and share with you the secrets such that you can become like us. Now, I, I was most grateful to the, Tim, the introducer, because there was one aspect of my biography that he missed out, which is that I'm a schizo. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> schizophrenic. It's because I, I've been in this country since the age of seven, you see. And, and sometimes I feel British, and sometimes I feel Nigerian. And, and the British side of me says, Tell them absolutely nothing. <laughs> Weren't these the people, or at least their fathers, who imposed political union on your country? 250 ancient nations lumped together in political union? Tell them nothing. Let them have a taste of their own medicine. But the Nigerian side of me, the always forgiving Nigerian side of me, says, go ahead and tell them. Because they knew not what they were doing <laughs> at the time that they did it. Well, I speak in truth because there's a letter that I'm going to share with you, uh, which was written to the Times in 1998 by one of the architects of political union, both in Europe and in Nigeria. His name was Sir Peter Smithers. And you will see from this letter, when I share it with you, that his plea was, forgive us, because we did not know what we were doing at that time. He was the Secretary of State in the Colonial Office uh, from 1952 to 1959, in the run-up to Nigeria's independence. He was also the Secretary General to the Council of Europe from 1964 until 1969, which actually was the year that I came into this country. Uh, this is what he said. Sir, during the negotiations for the independence of Nigeria, the view of the Secretary of State at that time, with which I agreed, was that in Nigeria, we should attempt to put together a large and powerful state with ample material resources, which will play a leading part in the affairs of the continent and of the world. This was attractive, but it involved forcing several diverse ethnic and cultural groups into a single political structure. In the retrospect of 40 years, it is clear that this was a grave mistake, which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so. It would have been better to establish several smaller states in a free trade area. In exculpation, it mu must be said that we did not then have the examples of the collapse of Yugoslavia and of the Soviet Union before our eyes. But it should now be clear to all but the willfully blind to see that it is extremely dangerous to force diverse racial and social entities into a single rigid structure such as that which has been built upon the foundation of the Maastricht Treaty. He concluded as follows. Recent history suggests that it would be best to complete the development of the common market and to call a halt to political integration in Europe. Well, they didn't listen. 
I certainly didn't listen in Nigeria, and, but I understand that's where you want to go. Now, I, I've heard the arguments advance that, but it's political union that has produced peace in Europe since 1945. That may be so, but I can assure you that it's political union that has produced war in Africa, in every single country in Africa, since political union was imposed in those territories. If getting out of the euro, the economic union, the monetary union, is proving as challenging and as hard as it is at present, just think how much harder it will be to get out of political union. Think of those images from Greece the other day of Greek and Greek exchanging blows over membership of the uh, European single currency. I'm reminded of one of those ditties that I learnt as a child in England. Uh, it concerned a grand old Duke of York. <laughs> uh, it looks as if you remember it. And I think he had uh, something like 3,000 men. <laughs> How many? 10,000. Uh, but I know that what he did, he marched them up to the top of the hill, and then he marched them down again. I assure you that if your leaders, as they are, bent on marching you up the hill of political union, by hook or by crook, they will surely have to march you back down again in due course. I leave you with the thought, union like marriage is easy, but like marriage, getting out can be very traumatic. <laughs> oh, the grand old Duke of York.